The following is a production of the Computer Information Systems Department at the Metropolitan State University of Denver. Welcome to You Get What You Bleed For. This video series is dedicated to helping students gain some very basic study skills quickly. I will first give a very basic introduction to how we learn. I will then demonstrate some very basic study techniques, specifically effective note taking, flashcards that work, and concept maps. To get started, we need to understand Bloom's hierarchy of learning. Dr. Benjamin Bloom was a researcher who investigated how people learn, and his big contribution was to formalize the idea that people learn at different levels, much like you might say that people achieve different levels of accomplishment in some types of martial arts, green belt, brown belt, black belt, etc. Bloom's hierarchy of learning is summarized here. It is important to note that the levels of learning build on one another. For example, as in karate, it doesn't make much sense to try to learn black belt moves until you've mastered what a yellow belt should know. Very briefly, let's consider the steps in the hierarchy. Knowledge is the most basic form of understanding. We define knowledge as the ability to produce previously learned material. For example, if we were talking about computer hardware, you might know that the acronym CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. In school, you can basically think of knowledge as the definitions you get from the textbook. Comprehension is the next step up in the hierarchy. We define comprehension as the ability to grasp material and restate it in your own words. For example, sticking with our computer hardware analogy, you might know that the CPU is the brain of the computer. It's the part of the computer that does the thinking. Your textbook may not have used these exact words, but this might be how you would explain the CPU to a friend or classmate in a way that makes sense to both of you. After we comprehend something, we can start to apply it. Application is defined as the ability to use learned material in new and concrete ways. In our computer analogy, once we comprehend that the CPU is where the thinking occurs in a computer, we can start to measure and compare the different speeds of CPUs. If we were asked by a salesperson, which CPU do you want in your new computer, we can apply our knowledge and comprehension to find the fastest CPU. Beyond application, we move into analysis. We define analysis as the ability to break down material into its component parts so as to understand its organizational structure. In a computer CPU, this might mean that you know the basic parts of the CPU are the arithmetic logic unit, the registers, and the control unit. You could also think about a car. A mechanic has a very good understanding of the parts of a car and how those parts work together, and he or she can analyze the problem if the parts of the car aren't working right. Beyond analysis is synthesis. We define synthesis as the ability to put pieces of material together to form a new whole. In a lot of ways, synthesis can also be thought of as using your comprehension and skills of application and analysis to create new things or ideas. An example of synthesis might be when you realize that creating a computer with more than one CPU, this is commonly known as a dual processor, will greatly increase the processing power of the computer. In our car analogy, you might use your knowledge and comprehension of material science to create car parts made from carbon fiber that are stronger, lighter, and cheaper than metal parts. Finally, beyond synthesis, we come to evaluation. Evaluation is the ability to judge the value of material for a given purpose. In our computer setting, this might mean that we are able to assess the relative advantages and disadvantages of a laptop as compared to a smartphone. In finance, investors are constantly evaluating various investment options. For example, what is the cash on cash return on an investment? How risky is the investment? And how do we weigh risk and return? In medicine, a physician might need to evaluate whether the results of a drug trial are credible or not. For example, was the trial of a new drug conducted carefully enough that it can be considered safe? Do we need to make exceptions if the new drug is going to be used by children or pregnant women? Again, it is basically impossible to skip steps. You cannot apply or analyze knowledge that you do not comprehend. You cannot synthesize or evaluate an idea unless you can apply and analyze it. In college, acquiring knowledge is a low-level skill. 
Instructors may introduce some of the most basic concepts, but it is largely up to the student to acquire knowledge. For example, you must memorize or otherwise learn many basic formulas and definitions in the textbooks and materials that you use for class. As you progress through school, you will hopefully move up through Bloom's hierarchy. In your 1000 and 2000 level introductory courses, you will be gaining knowledge and comprehension and hopefully doing some application. As you advance into upper level classes, and especially in graduate school, students are expected to gain basic knowledge and comprehension from the textbook and other class materials outside the classroom. In higher level classes, you want to get things out of class that you can't get from your books. In college, classroom time is very limited. If your instructor uses all her class time to pass along knowledge, you never get to higher level learning. Alternatively, if the class comes prepared, if they have read the chapter, have studied basic definitions, come prepared with questions, etc., your instructor can spend more time on the higher levels of learning. For example, a boring college lecture could be just a transfer of knowledge from professor to students. For example, a professor could just tell you or show you slides that say, Barack Obama was the 44th President of the United States. He was inaugurated on January 20th, 2009, blah, blah, blah. But you can get this from a textbook or even Wikipedia. A much more interesting discussion could be held by students who have read a biography about Barack Obama before coming to class, and they could then participate in a discussion about Obama. For example, they could ask things like, was it an advantage or disadvantage that Obama is African American? As the son of an immigrant father, did he quote unquote connect with immigrant Americans? Now that we understand the hierarchy of learning, I hope it is clear why we need to learn to take good notes. Good notes enable us to acquire knowledge and comprehension. So tip one is get good at taking notes from the textbook and in class. Studies have shown that highlighting your textbook is a total, utter waste of time. There is some value in reviewing the highlights, but this is a weak technique. Although I'll admit that this example is a tad extreme, I get worried when I see students whose idea of notes is page after page of yellow highlights. There are better study techniques, so I'm going to show you how I take notes. You will want to develop your own systems and habits. This demo is just how I do it. A page of my notes looks something like this. For demonstration purposes, I'm showing it to you in Word, but I actually take notes by hand. I always put the name of the class or some abbreviation of it in the upper right hand corner. For a given lecture or study session, I keep track of the number of pages that I took that day, which I put a circle around, and below the circled page number, I note the date. I do this for every page of notes I take, class, page number, and date. When I take notes, whether it's during a lecture or while I'm reading something, I have three different colored pens, blue, black, and red and a yellow highlighter on my desk. For me, black is my go-to color. That's what I write in. I use blue to circle key definitions. I use red to make note of important points or questions that I want to stand out when I review my notes, and I reserve yellow for stuff that is, quote, on fire, unquote. Only the most important stuff gets a yellow highlighter. I do not like to use lined paper, but that's just my preference. I use a three-hole punch to make my holes in the side, and I can put that into my three-ring binder. Each class I take gets its own folder, and I only take notes on one side of a page, but those are options that are up to you. Oftentimes, instructors start class with important announcements. Put these right at the top of your paper. Then you start your in-class lecture notes. I use a lot of paper, and I like to have lots of white space between my lines so I can go back and write stuff in later. That's up to you, but get your own system down. You have to practice. In my system, each hyphen starts a new note. To be more efficient, I try to cut any unneeded words while I'm note taking. As I go, I circle important terms and definitions, and I underline or star things that are really important that I know are critical to review later. Take notes with the goal of reviewing them. Write down questions you have about terms or ideas. If you don't understand something, this is a good time to put your hand in the air and ask for clarification. In this case, you see that I wrote down the definition, but I still have questions. I have knowledge, but not comprehension. I can recite the definitions, but I can't explain protocol 
to a friend or classmate in my own words. If you can't explain it in your own words, you do not have comprehension. Put your hand in the air and get your question answered. Now, the way it's supposed to work in any level of education is that you read the chapters or other material being lectured on before you come to class. If you can read the chapter before the professor lectures on it, you have time to study the material and gain a good bit of knowledge being offered. Then, when you go to lecture, the lecture is not a knowledge dump, but rather an opportunity for you to turn your knowledge into comprehension. However, I was once a student much like you are now, and I know you will not always, if ever, get around to reading the chapter before the lecture. That said, even if you can't study the entire chapter before the lecture, I strongly suggest that you simply skim the chapter in the three to five minutes you often have as you sit waiting for class to start. The goal of skimming is not to acquire knowledge. There is not enough time to do this in three minutes. But by skimming for just three minutes before the lecture starts, you might find out some key things to look out for. In this case, I might just start scanning the bold words in the chapter. So on this page, I think I have an idea about what the internet is, so no big deal. But the next term is intranet. Whoa, do I know what the difference between an internet and an intranet are? Better pay attention to these terms, and if the instructor doesn't tell us the difference, I'd better ask. Also, I see a term I've heard before, but I couldn't define it if I was asked to. Hmm, protocol. Hmm, and look, it shows up several times over the course of several pages. So intranet and protocol are terms I want to pay attention to when they come up during the lecture. So I write these terms at the top of my page before the lecture even starts and I write them down in red. These are words that I want to pay special attention to when the instructor covers them because I don't know what they mean. Now, for the sake of demonstration, we're going to pretend that during the lecture, the professor used the word protocol, but I didn't know what it meant. So I wrote a note to myself, what is a protocol? Lo and behold, about two minutes later, the professor gave us the definition, which I dutifully wrote down. However, I still don't really comprehend what this means, and I don't understand why it is important. So, I make a note about protocols. What does this mean, and why do I care? It's pretty clear that protocol is an important term. It's used like 10 times on three pages in the textbook, and the instructor talked about it in class. The problem is I still don't get it. So now you can either ask in class, catch the instructor after class or in office hours, you can seek help from a classmate, or you can come up with another solution on your own. The point is, you know this term is important. It's likely to show up again on the exam, and you need to take responsibility for your learning and get help to understand that term. Finally, the most important thing. Research shows that if we review our notes within 24 hours of taking them, our long-term retention of that information is much, much stronger. Folks, I do not purport to be the omnipotent master of note-taking. I'm just telling you what works for me. Here's an example of some notes that a student took. As you can see, she uses a system that employs several colors of highlighters. She also organizes concepts spatially by indenting. She made photocopies of key pictures in the textbook and pasted them into her notebook. When she reviews, she doesn't even need to have the textbook. It's all right here in her notes. These are rock star notes, and it's not because there is a right or wrong way to do this. It's because this student has obviously practiced and found a method that is effective for her. These are the notes of an A-plus student.